TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch, we are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Uh, right above me, if we go live and you happen to miss it, boom, this is where the highlights will be. Don't forget, we do got Patreon, post Monday through Friday, and we got merch. Now, this is from Sky Boy. The professional footballer turned Stonebridge gangster, Gavin Grant. So you're a professional football player, right? Making millions of dollars, way more money than you'll ever get as being a gangster. Being in the streets, way more, unless you like cartel level or something. And you, you want to be a gangster? Like, I don't even, okay, let me hear the story. I ain't never heard of this dude. Why? Because you got your face banged over with your shank in your hand. Oh, yeah. what? You got okay. your face banged over with your shank in your hand. Right there, this is your enemy. Your brother with this skin is not your enemy. Make do of where you're from. Like, not everywhere is meant to be glamorous and all of that. Like, like I believe my area was how it is for a reason. Beef I've got is man having beef with me, innit? I've got defense mechanism. And, and the best form of defense is a Oh, that's the new intro? Salute. Now, today's story is about a man who had the world Stone at his feet. Gavin Grant was born on the 27th of March, 1984. He grew up on the Stonebridge Park Estate in Northwest London. Stonebridge suffers from high rates of violent crime. It regularly tops Brent's crime tables and has a serious gun problem. So Gavin was a talented footballer. Due to his belief in his own ability, he put all his eggs in one basket, which was football. Right, that he was did the right thing. Heard. This dream, however, took a brutal setback when he was dropped from the Watford Academy at the age of 16. He was at the age of adolescence with his hormones all over the place, which is especially dangerous in a place like Stonebridge, where other opportunities to make money are through crime. Plenty of explanations for teenage turmoil are available. It's normal for teenagers to assert their independence and explore their limits, movie. taking risks, breaking rules, and rebelling against their parents while still relying on them for support and protection. This was sadly the case for Gavin. He and his friends resigning in the Stonebridge Park estate formed a gang known as Thugs of Stonebridge. They called themselves the Suspect Gang. It was led by gang leader Damien Williams. This lifestyle choice by Gavin entailed living the high life of selling drugs, living lavish, and gangland shootings on rival crews. They say money is the root of all evil. As for all money focused gangs, those at the bottom get envious of those at the top, regardless if they are part of the same team or not. Now, Fugs of Stonebridge member Leon Labastidi, also known as Playboy, was a known drug dealer in the state. He was rumored to have been involved in a burglary where he and two other accomplices robbed Romaine White, which is another Fugs of Stonebridge member, for his drugs and money. Not too long after... This is a terrible gang with a lot of... <laughs> like, y'all y'all was y'all was your own ops? White informed Fugs of Stonebridge members that Playboy had robbed him. Damien Williams, being a boss, saw this as an act of treason and ordered to have Playboy killed because of his involvement. Now both Gavin Grant and Gareth Downey were tasked with the job of finding Playboy and killing him. Gavin along with Gareth gunned down the former friend Leon Labastidi aka Playboy outside his mother's house in Mordaunt Road on the Stonebridge estate in June 2004. Now this caused gun man. crime in the borough of Brent. That's I be telling y'all man, that gang ain't even, you know what I'm saying? Like it be your own homies. To drastic Back door you setting you up. Like y'all hear rappers in America, they be like, I can play your man so get you white. That's true. They can really pay your... Most people in the hood have never seen a thousand dollars all at once. Like... It derives in such a short span. Over 30 plus shootings were recorded from 2004 till 2005. One of those incidences involving Damien Williams, the boss of Fugs of Stonebridge and friend of Gavin Grant being ambushed while sitting in his car when two rival gang members approached him from both angles and sprayed his vehicle. Luckily, he had survived the attempted murder. After the assassination of Playboy, this led to many tit-for-tat shootings from rival gang members who had previous affiliations with Playboy. 
No one was charged for his murder at the moment due to lack of witnesses coming forth. However, that wouldn't stop people from exposing who his killers were. One individual, Sean Stephanies, aka Fuzi, was a prominent figure in the Kingsbury area. He was rumoured to have posted threatening letters through several Thugs of Stonebridge members' letterboxes to expose them for what they had done. This wouldn't sit well with many members, leading to Thugs of Stonebridge members to look for Sean. Now Jamal Moore, aka Footage, was a Kensal Green Boy member and Church Road affiliate. Now at about 11.30pm on January evening in 2005, Gavin Grant and fellow Thugs of Stonebridge members went on a ride out looking for Sean. Sean had been celebrating at a family party near Wilsdon Green in North London along with Jamal Moore. Sean left the party, driven off in a taxi. Grainy CCTV footage recovered later by police showed four hooded Thugs of Stonebridge members walking in darkness towards the house. The men then see a taxi pass. They then move off camera, continuing towards the house. They had come for Sean, but once there, spotted 24-year-old Jamal Moore and turned on him instead. They opened fire, 16 shots were fired, peppering the silver Renault as he got out to get some beer from a shop near Wilsdon Green. Jamal Moore was hit in the chest and rolled down the hill. He called 999 on his mobile phone. I need an ambulance, quick, he groaned. I've been shot. I'm in the back garden, quick, please, I'm dying, please help. He's then heard naming one of the shooters. It was Rufus, you know, Rufus shot me. Rufus, real name, Roberto Parchman, was a known gunman in Stonebridge. Now after the shooting, Spider, real name, Darren Mathurin, yeah. drove the car away from the crime scene and set fire to burn evidence. But his hair got caught on fire along with his legs. He was immediately rushed to hospital. What an idiot. You can't even dispose of the... Like, what a, okay. And later nicked for his involvement. Now in 2005, Gavin Grant, while juggling two different lives, managed to catch a break in his football career. He first signed for a non-league club, Tutin and Mitchum, before being signed by Gillingham, who were a League One side where the league's top 100 earners earned around £7,000 per week. Gavin was finally a professional footballer while being responsible for the murder of two men. Gavin managed to make... So Gavin at 16 was kicked out, turned to the streets, and while trying to still get in football, he became like heavily involved. Then made it to one of the most lucrative paying clubs in this area or whatever 7,000 a week do you know what he's gonna do I know anybody that make it that's involved or, or, or that's still in the streets they that's now your gang got money instantly because he's going he's gonna supply everything that's needed he just that this whatever gang suspect gang or or they just became the most dangerous gang in the area <laughs> Because he got all the money now. It's time to upgrade all everything. <laughs> 10 appearances for Gillingham and score one goal before he later joined Millwall, a famous Millwall? club in South East London known best for their bloody football hooligan culture and rivalry with West Ham. Now in 2008, while playing for Millwall, Gavin Grant was arrested and tried for the murder of Jamal Moore. Now remember how Spider was arrested for his involvement where he was sentenced to 22 years for the murder of Jamal Moore. However, he later agreed to testify in court to decrease his life sentence on various charges. BBC News stated that four people are facing life. It's not even real life out there. It's just 22 years. You could have sat down and did that. Because what they give you, two, three years off? And now you're a rat for life. And still got to be in jail with that title. Sentences after Britain's first black supergrass gave evidence against them during a number of trials at the Old Bailey. Now what makes Spider case unusual is that his deal came after he had been convicted. In December 2008 of murdering Jamal Moore and had been jailed for life with a minimum tariff of 22 years, he subsequently did a deal with the police and the Crown Prosecution Service and his sentence was reduced to 8 years. In return, he agreed to give evidence at several trials. Now during the trial of Darren Matherin, aka Spider, he claimed he was only the getaway driver in the killing of Jamal Moore, naming Romaine White and Parchman, aka Rufus, as the gunmen. 
both from Kenton in North London, denied murder. However, they were sentenced to a minimum terms of 28 years and 27 years respectively. Gavin Crant was cleared of conspiracy to murder. Now Roberto Parchment, 24 years old, originally- I ain't gonna lie, Gavin had that money, man. When you in the streets, and the best investment is a lawyer. If you're gonna be in them streets, not chains, not cars, get you a lawyer, put him on, put him on uh, retention or whatever it's called, payroll, and, and you good forever. I'm gonna fight for you. Cause nine times out of ten in the streets, you're gonna see a big a big money at one point, and you might not ever see that amount of money again. So with that amount of money, I'm not condoning nothing, but I'm saying get you a lawyer with it. Put him on retainer. There it is. That's the word. Put him on retainer. Have yourself good for however long you can get good for. Because eventually, the fear is coming knocking, my boy. Convicted of Moore's murder, was found guilty again. Following a retrial brought about by the involvement of Supergrass Spider, the first use of Operation Trident, he was jailed for life again and ordered to serve the remainder of his 28-year sentence. However, rem <laughs> hey, imagine getting agreeing to turn rap for 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 a lesser sentence. Then a retrial happened after you done ratted on everybody, and you got the same sentence and had to go back in there and, and serve the exact same sentence. Like that's messed. Up. That's all that for nothing. You can told on everybody now. Everybody in there. You're not going to make it out of there. <laughs> Main White, 24, who had been previously convicted of conspiracy to murder, was cleared by a 10 to 2 majority verdict. Mm. Now, Gavin returned to his footballing career. Millwall would sell him to Wickenby Wanderers, who would sign on a two year contract. He only played 10 times in two years and then later became a free agent. He got so desperate to get back to his footballing career that he signed for Bradford on a non contract basis. <laughs> on the 26th of February 2010. He got bags of potential and is a good finisher, said former England manager, albeit caretaker, Peter Taylor, who managed Grant at Wickenby and Bradford and said, he's got an eye for goal, he's quick, he's an athlete, and he'll only get better. Unfortunately for Taylor, Gavin Wooden, as he was later arrested for the murder of Leon Labastidi, AKA Playboy, in July 2010, oh, came back Gavin Grant along with boss Damien Williams and Gareth Downey all stood trial for his murder. Now Super Snitch Spider once again gave evidence. He stood looking- Bro, at this point, Spider is working with the gut. Like, at this point, he is an employee of the government. Like, like you locked, he just was like, forget it. I might as well just keep snitching. Because I guarantee you, they was, they was Tyson Fury in that man in jail. So he was like, man, I'm finna tell on everybody, huh? He, again, for the third Hell time. Tired, frequently chewing his lower lip, he said that after learning of the shooting of Playboy, he went to Damien Williams' house. I went inside and saw Gavin coming out of the bathroom. He'd been washing gunpowder off and water was dripping off his head. He saw me and the first thing he said was, is he dead? I said, I think so, he's on the floor. Gavin Grant, 26, who was still listed as a midfielder on Bradford City was handed a 25 year sentence. Gareth Downey, 25 years old from Birmingham, received a similar term for murder, as did Damien Williams, who was 32 of Southwark, South London, for conspiracy to murder. Now let me talk you through this famous picture of Fugs of Stonebridge members. Spider, centre, with face obscured to hide his identity. With Damien Williams, far left, the one with the tie, and Gavin Grant, second from right, in the Czech shirt, who was later jailed for murder. Now in 2009, Stonebridge member K. Cope, who later became one of the UK's biggest ever rappers, dropped a track titled, Are You Alone Fan? Dedicated to dissing Super Snitch Spider. Real name, oh, I remember Darren that. Mathuru. I remember this, okay. The song sits at 10 million views today. K. Cope made it clear that he was never welcome home and if he was ever seen, he would be murdered on sight. Obviously. Some of the lyrics read, I'm too street for you halfway crooks. Get guilty and try and pass their book. Spill beans cause their arse is shook. Real G's gonna read that book. You feel me, snitch? 
Now Grant's conviction was a stunning success for Trident officers. As he was sent down, Grant was seen to be weeping. Only months before he had been playing professional football, trying to resurrect a career that had stalled when he was 16. Because he had a made it with Watford, he went back to Stonebridge and hung around with friends and family there and got into wrong things. Then after the shootings, he tried to sort himself out. But it was too late. Man, once you out, man, even if you're young and you out on like some school stuff, like do your best not to come back. Say if you go away for college, do your best. Don't you don't even need to come back if you if you if it's a, if it's a vicious environment. Far too late. Cause bad always has a more more of an appeal than doing good. Like if we're being honest. And that brings me to the end of the story of Gavin Grant. Don't forget to hit that like. Salute, Skyboy. Appreciate this, man. I'm gone. Tell her leave a like, comment, subscribe, and go.